I just want to comment on the Finnish professor's picture you saw earlier. You saw the activist from Canada. They were uh, having the sign, they talk, we die. And they, what they actually did was that uh, when the Minister of Health was speaking, they went, they turned their back to her and uh, held up the, these signs. So uh, after a year after that, uh, in Montreal, they had three heroin clinics, one year after that. But I, I'm not very uh, used to speak English, so I, will, I, had, I have a manus, so I will try to read from it. First of all, I want to say that many good things are happening in Norway right now. Uh, we have the NOU working with the new reform that will give us decriminalization for use and possession. I think that is a good start. Compared to other countries, we are now doing something about it. I think this reform will change the way the civil society uh, way of seeing people who use drugs. So I think it's a good step forward. And another good thing about uh, drug policies and change, changes is that we, people who actually use drugs, are involved in changing the system. Norwegian guidelines and working groups that involves better drug policies are filled with different user unions and NGOs. Uh, this is something we should be proud of and still be pushing forward for. For me personally, the most important thing to change now is reducing those lives we lose every year. People are still dying and the one, the one thing we know that saves lives is OSD. Uh, OSD is still not expanding with new drugs that we have been asked for for several years. A lot of people are struggling and misfit with the practice. The value of harm reduction services have increased. That's very good and is the only way to deliver uh, a humane and respectful meetings be between our community and service providers. We are about to get two hub heroin clinics in Norway one in Oslo and one in Bergen. This will mean a lot uh, to those entering these clinics. Um, the o OST service in this country must be based on freedom to choose their own medication and a friendly way of agreements regarding home dosage. Um, our OST system have for too long been raised on control and stigma because of the strict rules. Over 8,000 people are living with OST now. It's about time to get a much better practice and extend with other medications. We already have several to use, but don't do it. In, in the future, I think we need to transfer those living quite normal lives to general practitioner, to the doctors, and let the hospitals and the TSB uh, do the work with people that really need help. The way it is now is too much for the service providers to handle. Each uh, consultant has approximately 80 to 100 clients, so it's, it's not working as good as, as it could be. Um, I talked to an uh, old lady that had been several, several years in OST. Her only contact was her general practitioner, her doctor. She was on methadone and had lived like everybody else. She had a job, she had grandkids, and sudden, suddenly she got a call from the OSD clinic and they wanted her to come to the center for urine tests because they didn't believe that the doctor, they didn't believe that uh, she took the urine test as she should in the doctor office. So after 15 years, she had to meet up at the OSD clinic. And stories like this and much worse are happens a lot. And because of guidelines that don't say anything about when you are cured or when, 
or about when the control is stopping. It's like you always, you will always be a patient. And for me and our drug use union, this is um, important to change. And we also think that uh, a new way of regulating other drugs will be a good way forward. Thank you.